A very good afternoon. Thank you for taking the time to attend today's webinar. I hope you're all doing great today. This is Sharda Murthy from the AD Self Service Plus team. And I will be your presenter for today. And we are going to be talking about securing your Windows logons with two factor authentication with the help of AD Self Service Plus. But before we jump into today's session, I would like to quickly check if my voice is audible and the display is well and clear. If you're able to hear my voice and if the display is good, please send an OK message in the chat box provided. Thank you so much. And on that note, if you have any trouble with viewing the screen, the display or the voice, please drop in a message immediately so I can look into it and make sure we have a seamless session. So yes, we are going to be talking about securing Windows logon with two-factor authentication. That's the topic for discussion for today. A quick note about the webinar. It's a 45-minute webinar. Uh, a brief walk through how to configure Windows logon two factor authentication for your Windows logon using AD Self Service Plus. That's the idea of today's webinar. So, if you're somebody who is new to using AD Self Service Plus, I would highly recommend signing up for our workshop series. I will be handling it, and that will help you give complete insight into all that you can do with AD Self Service Plus, starting from how to set it up and going all the way till exploring. Single sign on, password synchronization, password um, expiry notification, enforcing a granular password policy, and all that, which you can do with AD Self Service Plus. But this session will be helpful if you already have a good hang of using AD Self Service Plus. So I'm going to walk you through configuring two factor authentication for your Windows logon. So when I say two factor authentication, this works both for your remote session as well as Windows logon for users logging into your computer. So what or how two-factor authentication works during a Windows logon is that the first factor of authentication is obviously the Windows logon credentials. So the user will give in their Active Directory username and password, after which they will be redirected to the AD Self Service Plus console wherein the secondary factor of authentication, which has been enabled by you, the administrator, will have to be authenticated or verified by the user. So this could be SMS or email-based verification code. We support Duo Security, RSA Secure ID, as well as Radius authentication at the moment. And once this verification is complete, user will have a seamless access to their Windows logon machine. So I'm sure you're aware why we need a secondary factor of authentication or why passwords are not enough in today's world. So with increase in security threats, a recent pointer that I read told me that about the 80-20 rule, which holds good for passwords as well. So what is the 80-20 rule? The 80-20 rule basically means that 80% of the password I'm sorry, 80% of the security attacks that happens in any organization is because of the 20% of the most commonly known factors. And believe me when I say this, the factor that tops the list is password-based hacking. So one of the easiest ways to break into a network or a user system is by misusing the user's identity or hacking into the password. And I'm sure we're aware of that. We have also noticed the uh, focus towards security in the past couple of years, especially this decade. We see how the importance towards security is constantly increasing. We have new compliance mandates coming up like GDPR, which came up recently. We have more focus on compliance rules that organizations have to abide to. And this clearly indicates that we as organizations need to take that step to ensure that we are secure. And this is where two-factor authentication comes into picture when it comes to passwords. 
AD Self Service Plus initially supported two factor authentication for logging into uh, the logging in and accessing during password uh, resets, multi factor authentication, that is. And we also supported two factor authentication for single sign on logons while logging into the web console. But now we have come up with Windows two factor authentication, which basically means that anytime a lo user logs into their Windows system, either directly or through remote, they will have to go through an additional layer of security. So we understand the importance of two-factor authentication. And the motto of this webinar is to help you configure uh, Windows two-factor authentication using AD Self Service Plus. So yes, if you have any questions regarding today's session, please keep them coming in the questions tab. I will take time to answer them during the session itself as I walk you through how to configure two-factor authentication. And yes, you can also, we also have a dedicated question answer session, the last 10 minutes of this session. So you can save your questions towards the end as well. And if you have any trouble following the configuration, please don't worry. We have a dedicated help document, but not just that, the video of this particular session will be available online and it can also be sent to you via email. So if you're interested to receive a copy, if you would like to leave mid-session because of your busy schedule, please go ahead. All you have to do is drop in your mail ID and I'll make sure that the video recording of this session reaches you. All right, so what you see on your screen is the agenda for today. We are going to be talking about improving password security with AD Self Service Plus. So not to forget passwords, which is the first factor of authentication. So I'm going to start by talking about how we can strengthen passwords using AD Self Service Plus. We have a granular password policy. I'm sure you as administrators or IT technicians are aware that the Windows domain password policy has not seen any drastic change in the past 18 plus years. Yes, the password policy that was set 18 years ago still holds good. The password complexity has not gone through any major changes. And that is a major disadvantage because with constant increase in security threats, once again, from a recent report that I read, there has been a 200% increase in security threats compared to the previous decade. A 200% increase in attacks, in increase in hacking techniques, in increase in uh, attacks like ransomware compared to the last decade, 200%, that's a huge count. And like I said, the 80-20 rule simply states that 20% of the most commonly known factors are the reasons or are paving way to these attacks. So passwords being one of the major reasons uh, why security attacks happen. It is very important as organizations to improve the quality of passwords, and that can be done using AD Self Service Plus. So when I say quality of passwords, I mean increasing the complexity of passwords that user abide to. Even today in 2018, I'm sure this word is going to, this list is going to come up in the very beginning of 2019, the most commonly used passwords in 2018. And I am shocked to see that the word password, 12345, QRT are still the most commonly used passwords. It is extremely easy to crack in when there's a pattern. And we're also aware that uh, when passwords follow a pattern, it is easy to break into. But with increase in attacks, there are also technology which is increased, the hacking technology. The hacking techniques or the attacking techniques have also increased. There are new words that I hear every day with respect to password security about attacks happening all around the world. Major organizations have been compromised. And that is exactly why I'm stressing on improving the quality of passwords that users have in your organization. Because as we're aware, most of them, most of the users still stick to one single password. And if we're able to strengthen the password by enforcing a granular password policy, wherein we are aware that the password that the user has to abide to is strong, is not easy to hack, then we are one step closer to having a secure environment. So I'm going to take up the first task of showing you how to set strengthen users' passwords with the help of a granular password policy. 
So quickly jumping into the AD Serve Service Plus console right here. What you see on your screens is Manage Engine AD Self Service Plus logging in as an administrator. I have pre configured the settings to make it easy for today, but I'm going to quickly walk you through all that I've done. So, under domain settings is where I've configured my domain. Pretty simple entering the domain name, my domain controller, verifying my identity, and authenticating it. The status is successful. AD Self Service Plus also supports multiple domains, so you can go about adding more domains. I've set this as my default domain. I can go back and make changes anytime. This helps me update the domain objects. We also have an AD synchronizer that runs on a periodic basis, and also delete if you do not wish to work with the domain anymore. So the configuration tab is where most of our activities happen. As you see, we have self-service policies listed on the screen. I'm going to read the policy name for you to give you an idea of what I'm going to show you next. I've named it as admin, HR, and finance. And I'm sure you already have an idea of what it does. So AD Self Service Plus allows you to create self-service policies. And you can select it specific to OUs and groups present in your Active Directory. So when you have multiple domains, you can create multiple policies. and the self-service policies that you create in the AD Self-Service Plus policy configuration right here helps you to customize or build self-service policies for all the self-service actions that AD Self-Service Plus supports. So this is the major advantage of creating unique policies right here. And I'm going to show you my Active Directory setup. So I have a demo setup right here. I've given it my name. The organizational unit has my name, Sharada, right there. And I've sorted users into each sub OUs, admin, finance, and HR, as listed on your screens. So the idea is to mimic an organizational structure. So you can see I've sorted users into each of these OUs. And to keep it simple, I've created policies with giving permissions to all the self-service actions, that is reset, unlock, self-update, and change password. And I have added all the users belonging to each of these organizational units, keeping it very, very simple for today. All right, so the second step that I have to do to enforce a granular password policy is right here, password policy enforcer. Like I said, the Windows domain password policy is more than 18 years old. So I'm going to quickly walk you through the advantage of the password policy enforcer or the granular password policy that AD Self Service Plus supports. It simply means that when a policy is selected, as in right here, HR, and I enable or enforce a custom password policy, I can choose password complexity rules listed right here and work about it to make sure that these are the complexity rules that users in my organization need to abide to. And the advantage of this particular password policy enforcer is that this password policy can be enforced not only in your Gina CP screen, but it is also enforced in your Active Directory users and computers, which simply means that you can override the weak Windows domain password policy with a custom strong granular password policy that you enforce using AD Self Service Plus. The advantage being this is enforced in your Gina CP screen, your Active Directory users and computers, your reset and change password pages. And if you have password synchronization enabled, this password policy will also be enforced across your Office 365, G Suite, Zoho, and multiple other on-premises and cloud applications as well. So that is an advantage here. What I'm going to do is try and show you how this works. Let me quickly tweak the passwords available right here. I'm going to reduce the special character to one. The minimum password length is going to remain at eight. Must contain both upper and lower cases. I do not need this. The number of numeric characters to be included, I'm going to change this to two. This allows use of palindromes. This allows use of character more than two times consecutively. 
and disallow use of five consecutive characters from the username. All right. So these are the basic password policies that is available, complexities that is available. But if you go down, you can also find that you can disallow consecutive characters from your whole password, which is basically the history rule. You can disallow use of dictionary words, which is very, very important in most cases, because like I said, hacking with the help of a dictionary is one of the easiest methods to break into your break or hack your password. Disallowing use of patterns, once again, avoiding patterns, Password patterns like QWERTY, ASDF, 1234, the word password itself, all that can be added right here. You can add a list, comma separated values. And yes, you can also override all the complexity rules with the help of the passphrase rule, which simply means that all the complexity rules are overridden if you have a password length of 15 or 20 or something above that. So passphrases, once again, have been said to be one of the most difficult to hack. Once again, the more the password length, the difficult, the more time it takes to break into a password, break the password down. So the passphrase rule is also available right here. So what I'm going to do is enforce this policy in the Gina CP and show this policy requirement in the reset password pages as well, and click on save. I'm going to try and see if I can log into one of the user right now. and see if I can show you the enforce password policy. All right. So what I'll do is try and log in into the AD Cell Service Plus portal itself as a user and jump to the change password page where I can show you the enforce granular password policy right there. And the advantage here is as I enter the password, I have a check against all the complexity rules that I have abided to. So you can also view the restricted patterns and know that this particular rule is not checked so the user has to Go back and make the changes. So I will not be able to change my password now because I have failed to meet the password requirement. So this is an advantage. This is how you can ensure that users in your organization naturally abide to a more stringent password policy. The same works in a Gina CP screen as well. Let me try and see if I can enforce this policy for another user. I'm going to enforce this policy in the Gina CP screen for the policy admin. Let me see if I can log in and show you the same in the Gina CP screen as well. All right, I've successfully logged in as Sharza. So I'm going to hit change a password and I'm going to enter Sharza's old password. And you can see that as I did that, I have the password complexity rules listed on my screen, making it very, very easy for the user to be aware of the password complexity rules that he or she has to abide to, also making it a huge advantage for you as an administrator, because a lot of times you get help desk calls, your IT help desk gets calls, IT technicians get calls about password management troubles, and this listed right here saves all the troubles because the user is aware of the complexity rules that they need to abide to, and thereby they're also confident of the password that they set, knowing that their account is secure. So this is one step closer to security and we are aware that by enforcing a granular password policy, we know that users have a smart, strong password, which cannot be easily compromised. But the whole idea of today's session is to talk about how passwords are not enough.
Why are passwords not enough? Simply because with increase in hacking technology, with increase in the number of hacking or network breaks that's happening in today's environment, we have, we have come to a strong conclusion that passwords are easy to compromise. We also are aware that users still stick to weaker passwords and that can easily be avoided by simply adding an additional layer of security. And this can be achieved with the help of two-factor authentication. So two-factor authentication can be enabled for both local and remote desktop logons. I'm going to show you a remote desktop uh, right now. And I'm also going to show you how you can enforce a granular two-factor authentication based on OUs or groups present in your Active Directory next. So the idea is to improve security. And I'm sure by now you're aware of how this is going to be beneficial. We have made sure that users have abided to a strong stringent password with the help of a granular password policy. But what more we can do is add an additional layer of security wherein the user has to verify his identity with the help of something that he already owns. So this is an email or verification code that is sent to him, his personal device, or this could be a passcode like the radius passcode or a duo security authentication or an RSA secure ID. So basically a secure passcode, which will, which is something that is very personal to a user. And this will ensure that we are aware that users do go through a strong password policy and have a secure login every time they access their Windows account. Because when a user's account is compromised, when a Windows password is compromised, that means easy access to an organization's network. And I'm sure you're aware of the consequences that can pose on us. All right, so it is very, very simple to set this up in your organization. I'm going to work around the policy admin. So under advanced setting is where you can find login two-factor authentication. All I am going to do is enable two-factor authentication. So I'm going to stick to verification code and email-based verification code to show you on screen how this is going to work. And click on OK. So that is simply how you need to enable two-factor authentication for all the users listed under the policy admin. But it doesn't stop there because what happens now is that when a user tries to log in to their AD Self Service Plus portal, They have to go through a secondary factor of authentication, verification code, two-step verification via email. Yes, this works. Once you've enabled it in the advanced setting, all I need to do is enter the verification code, which I've received via mail, right there. I'm quickly going to, given the verification code, to continue, and I will have a one-click seamless access to my AD Cell Service Plus account. So this will serve as a major advantage to ensure that the change password operation is done by the right person. And if you have single sign-on enabled, one-click seamless access to all the applications for which single sign-on enabled is it is ensured that the right person is logging in and accessing all these applications. Mail group subscriptions can also be done through this portal. You can self-update information. So this acts as a secondary factor of authentication to give access to your AD Self Service Plus portal, which gives you access to a lot of self-service actions right from one single console. But what we're focusing here is about logging into your Windows account. Let me see if that works as well. What I'm going to try and do is take a remote connection to the user Sharada, entering the password just to see if I have two-factor two authentication enabled. So there you go. 
the identity yes proceeding with it so you can see that as i have entered my password after enabling two factor authentication i have been redirected to the ad self service plus page this is how it is going to look every time a user logs in either through the remote or directly from the machine and once this is chosen and i click on continue an email verification code has to be fetched i'm going to quickly check my mail and grab the verification code i hope i've got the code right continue after which i have access to sharda's account so i have a very very interesting question thank you so much nelson for that so this says that this would work only if the windows pc has internet access connection exactly so i am also going to talk to you about how this this will be this can be overridden if the windows access is not available i'm going to get to the advanced settings very very shortly so on simply enabling two factor authentication using ad self service plus the user has to go through an additional layer of security the user has to verify their identity with the help of the email codes in this case it could be anything other than that it could be duo security your rsa secure id it could also be your radius password so that is one major advantage you have taken the next step towards closer security but we also have to look at all the pros and cons of having two factor authentication enabled and what if the user does not have or is denied access to the ad self service plus portal so that is a choice that that is a choice that you can take as an administrator which i'm going to walk you through right now i'm going to talk to you about how this works on the back end so under administrative tools right here i'm going to click on gina mac which is your control all delete screen so i'm sure you're aware that your gina is how or gina is what enables the whole windows authentication to happen so there you find windows log on two factor authentication and when you configure when you have the right settings enabled for windows log on tfa and when you do the configuration under the policy configurations advanced settings this is enabled by default so here is where the catch is you can enable to bypass two factor authentication if the ad self service plus server is down so this is a choice that you as administrators can take this is also when the internet access is not available so when users do not have access to the internet and would like to simply log in and access their system it is possible you can check this so that the two factor authentication can be bypassed what i'm going to do is quickly show you what happens uh when a user tries to do this when they are logged in as sharda so i'm going to repeat the process of logging in so my verification id i choose my verification id but then i decide i do not want to go ahead with it so when i give cancel it says i must complete both steps of authentication to log in so this clearly means that i do have access to my ad self service plus server i do have access to ad self service plus authentication and i'm skipping the step which i cannot do but if in case i do not have access to the ad self service plus server because it's down or if i do not have access to the internet then the bypass will automatically happen also the customization setting that we do here has to be reflected in the gina cp so i told you while starting the session that i pre configured things what i'd done is given a configure access url a very important thing to note here is that it has to be in the https format so you need to ensure that your access url is 
in the HTTPS and the port number is saved respectively. Also, this works for Windows Vista and above versions only. So that is a restriction that is levied on us. And any customization that you do right here. So if you are setting up Windows log on TFA for the very first time, I would definitely recommend you to jump back to Gina Mac installation. Click on the Gina Mac installation that you already have. You can under install machine, you will already see your machine which has a Gina Mac installation available. I would highly recommend you to hit reinstall just to ensure that all is good and going well. So this has to be pushed once again after the Windows logon. TFA is enabled right here from this particular screen. Also, when I was setting this up for the very first time, my AD Self Service Plus was running in the HTTP console. So I'm going to also walk you through where to do the settings for that. So under the administrator tool, under product settings is where you can find connection. For Windows two-factor authentication, the advantage is that you just need to enable the SSL port. You give, you get your port number right there, and you will be able to good to go. Your configuration URL will be available right there. You do not need to verify your SSL certification tool. I've not done that because this is my demo system, but you will also have a warning every time you log in. So since I do not have the SSL certification verified for this particular system, I had a security warning saying, do you want to go ahead? And I clicked yes, but the Windows log on TFA will still be good to work. And yes, so these are the points that you need to know when you're setting up Windows log on TFA in your organization for the very, very first time. But once done, I'm sure it is a simple one step process to enable it across multiple OUs and groups present in your organization. So answering the question, yes, this will work only if the PC has internet access. But once again, you as an administrator have control over if it should bypass Windows TFA or not by click checking the bypass tab. All right, so I'm going to quickly show you how to set this up for multiple OUs and groups as well. So like I said, you can set up different OUs and groups policies, self-service policies for different OUs and groups right here. Choose the self-service actions that you want to restrict users to. And I said the major advantage of creating self-service policies is that you can customize all the self-service actions that you give users access to. For example, you can restrict Windows two-factor authentication only for users belonging to admin because of the higher um, organizational priority they have. For users belonging to HR, you can simply enforce a granular password policy, ensuring that they just stick to smart passwords. For finance, you can do both. You can enforce a granular password policy and also have a secondary factor of authentication. Also, when we talk about AD Self Service Plus, I would like to quickly walk you through the, the basic, the most commonly used feature in this tool, which is password reset. So we also support multi-factor authentication during password reset to secure the password reset process. Like I said, once again, password security is very, very important. We know that it is the easiest way to compromise and break into a, a user's network, misuse a user's identity, and hacking a password takes a lot of time, effort put into it, whereas misusing a user's identity by simply um, trying to mimic the user's action is more common because, because a password like P-A-S-S-W-O-R-T or Q-O-T or 12345 at your name is something that is very, very easy to break in. Or we also have a trend of using sticky notes to save our passwords and we do not know if the threat is an insider attack or not. So it is very, very important to secure your organizational network. Also keep your users aware about their password, about their password security, and to improve the password reset process and account unlock process, we support multiple modes of verification. You can enable them, you can mandate all these and make sure that users have to go through multiple 
factors of authentication verify their identity before they have access to their password reset, resetting their Active Directory account. Because when we talk about AD Self Service Plus, we're talking about an integrated password self service and single sign on tool. So one single password that is compromised can lead to compromise of multiple single sign on accounts. Your password synchronized accounts can also be compromised. And, and that gives us major motivation to take password security very seriously. So that is exactly why we constantly work towards improving our authentication techniques. We work towards bringing in more security. We also have a granular password policy that helps you override the existing password policy. So other than this, you also have the reports tab, which will give you a complete insight into all that is happening in your user's environment. So when we talk about password self-service, we make users feel responsible to take care of their own password self-service actions. We hand over the torch of password self-service, but our duty does not stop right there. We also monitor what's going on in our password environment, in our Active Directory password environment, and take the right actions to avoid any trouble well in advance. And yes, with that said, I'm sure you had a complete insight, a complete walkthrough into how to set up Windows two-factor authentication using AD Self Service Plus, how to improve quality of passwords using a granular password policy, and if you're interested to learn about what more AD Self Service Plus does, you're very well welcome to join our future webinars as well as workshop series. We have a dedicated five-day workshop series walking through every single feature of AD Self Service Plus. And yes, if you have any questions, please keep them coming. If you've already posted your question, please give me some time to answer your questions in the questions tab. Also, if you would like to receive a personal copy of this webinar um, recording, please drop in your mail ID right here in the questions tab or chat box, and I will make sure that it is mailed to you in the next two days. And there on your screen is resources on what you can use, what we provide, and how you can reach out to me and my team. If you are well aware of AD Self Service Plus, but if you have trouble working with a particular feature, please feel free to drop in a mail to support at adselfserviceplus.com. And yes, you can also drop in a mail to me anytime you require a personalized demo. If you if you have questions working with AD Self Service Plus, I will be there to help you out. My name is Sharda Murthy. I'm a product expert in Manage Engine AD Self Service Plus, and you can reach me at sharda at manageengine.com. Also, please check out our AD Self Service Plus resource tab available on the web page. We have a wide range of knowledge based articles giving you a stepwise guide on all that you can do with AD Self Service Plus. We have a dedicated blog talking about the latest releases, the fun aspect of IT security, network security, passwords, and a lot more of what we do in Manage Engine. And also have a dedicated forum where Administrators, IT specialists, technicians come forward and have a quick discussion about how they can make the best use of AD Self Service Plus. All the resources that we can share with you is discussed on the forum, available on the blog, and also available on the web page. So, yes, with that said, I've come to the end of today's session, but you can always reach out to me at charadatmanageengine.com. Thank you so much for taking time to attend today's webinar. It was a pleasure to be the host of today and have you on board. I really hope the session was informative and you learned in detail about how to configure Windows two-factor authentication for users in your organization using AD Self Service Plus. I would like to thank each and every one of you for taking the time away from your very busy schedule to attend today's webinar. It was a delight to be the presenter once again. You can always reach out to me at charadatmanagement.com. I will make note of all the mail IDs that I'm receiving right now to drop in a personalized uh, copy of the webinar and also the resources that we support for two-factor authentication. And yes, if you have any further questions, please keep them coming. You can also drop in a mail to me or my support team. Thank you so much once again. With that, I would like to sign off for today's webinar. This is Sharda from the marketing team of Manage Engine signing off for today. Thank you so much. Have a great day ahead. Mm -hmm.